G'day aspiring engineers. In this video we're going to be doing bottom-up assembly. Welcome to Future Engineering. The future starts now. This is the Geneva mechanism that we modified last week. We got this mechanism from GrabCAD. When we modified it we put this hand crank on there. Next week we're going to make a top-down assembly from this model, which we also got from GrabCAD. This one was a step file, so that those who have the personal use license of Fusion 360 will be able to follow along with that one. So let's just do a couple of things. We're going to switch off that axis there, and we can find that in the construction folder. Here's the axis. We just turn off the little eye, and the axis is gone for now. Let's close that. What I'm going to do is mouse over the top of the feature tree, activate the little radio button, which activates the top of the assembly. Click in the window somewhere, and now we can unisolate the driving wheel. Right click, unisolate. So now you can see the rest of the mechanism. But as it came in from SolidWorks, this mechanism won't work. I'm going to revert to the original position. So what I'm going to do is save each of the three components. So activate the base, right click, save as. I'm going to put this in the same folder and we'll call this one Geneva Mechanism Base. Then activate the next one. Save a copy as. We'll call this one Geneva Mechanism Drive. Now I've got the three parts of the assembly. Start a new document by clicking on the plus icon. And the first thing we should do is save the document. Let's call this bottom-up assembly. So the first thing we'll do is bring in the base. And it's just a matter of click and drag. Notice the little link icon in the name of the base. And that indicates that in this bottom-up assembly file, it's got a link to the, the base. It doesn't actually have the complete model within the assembly file. Next we'll bring in the drive wheel. Same way, drag and drop. Just drop it somewhere next to the part we've just brought in. Now it is upside down, and when it arrives in the window, you'll see that the move copy command is open. And so what we'll do is we'll get the rotate option here, and swivel it 180 degrees. Didn't quite get exactly right, so I'll type it in. I'm also going to move it up a little bit just so that we can uh, see where it is. Change the Move Object option to Components. Select the drive wheel and use the little arrow, the vertical arrow, to just drag it up a little bit. Capture the position and OK. Next we'll drag in the indexing wheel and just drop that next to it. We'll have to move that one too. Ninety degrees, drag it up vertically a little bit to the side. Now you can see that what we want to do is we want to put the pin on the drive wheel into this hole in the base, and we want to put the pin on the indexing wheel into the other hole. We want to make it so that they can move freely as they're intended. On the assemble menu, we see joint. And the joint dialog box has a few things in it for component 1 and component 2. And it can be a little bit confusing as to which one component 1 is and which one is component 2. You know we want to move the, the drive wheel onto the base. So the drive wheel and the base are 1 and 2. But how do we work out which one's which? Brad Tallis of Fusion 360 fame has a little mnemonic which really helps. The way that he says it is the one that you want to move is number 1. And the one you want to move it to is number two. So I want to move the drive wheel, which is number one, and I need to select it. And the way that I'm going to select it is I want the very center of the pin. And you see the little icon which appears whenever you mouse over anywhere. I want that to be right in the center of the pin. And you notice that it grays out and the focus on the select tool moves from component one to component two. So this is component two. That's the one that I want to move it to. 
the base. Now, when I move to the edge of the hole, the little indicator here moves to the center of the hole, which is just what we want, and I can click for that. Now, you see the little animation there is for the rigid joint. So I'm going to go to the, from the position tab to the motion tab and choose the kind of joint that we want here. Not the rigid one, we want the revolute joint. And then you see the animation for a revolute joint. You also see that we have a slightly different flag on the joint, and that's the one which indicates a revolute joint. So click OK. Now we'll put a joint between the base and the indexing wheel. Same thing, drop down the assemble menu, joint, capture position. The one we want to move is the indexing wheel. So I'm going to mouse over the pin and make sure that I get the little indicator in the center of the pin and left click. The indexing wheel grays out and the focus moves to component two. And component two, you remember, is the one that I want to move to. Again, I want the little indicator to be right in the center of the hole. So I'll click while that's visible. And you see that we have the right joint selected this time. It's got the animation for a revolute joint, and so we'll click OK. So we've just done a bottom-up assembly, which means that we've assembled parts from separate parts. Now, things aren't exactly moving. We've got a few things to set up to make this mechanism move the way that we want it to. You'll notice that if I click and drag on any part of this assembly, the whole thing will move freely. So we need this thing to be fixed. Now I did a lot of SOLIDWORKS in the past, and with SOLIDWORKS what we would normally do is choose one of these parts that we want to have fixed in place, and we'll choose this or an equivalent, ground. But with Fusion 360 it works slightly differently. In order to fix the base of our assembly in one position in the document, what we do is we go to the Assemble menu, an as-built joint, capture the position, and then making sure that we have the rigid joint chosen, we choose first the base in the tree and then the top of the assembly tree. We see that we get the joint applied, click OK, and then when you grab hold of the handle on the, the drive wheel, you can see that it's behaving as we expect. We could also grab the indexing wheel and turn that around, but you see that it's not really true to life. In order to get a more realistic motion in our assembly, we go to the Assemble menu and we click on Enable Contact Sets. And you notice what that does is puts a, another folder in the design tree. Go back to the Assemble menu and we'll make a new contact set, which opens up the dialog box. We need to select two or more of the bodies. We'll go for the drive wheel and we'll go for the indexing wheel. Click OK. And when we grab hold of the handle, you see that we're getting a much more realistic motion in our assembly. And this is how the Geneva mechanism is supposed to work. One thing that will help when you're doing assemblies is to come down to the bottom right hand corner here where we see a few settings and toggle on component color swatch. That gives us color coded components in our assembly tree. And when we have a look at the timeline down here, you'll see the color coded showing up in the timeline as well. That's not very helpful for us when we've got a very small assembly like this, but when you have a, an assembly with 50, 100, 200 parts, then it becomes very useful. And another way this can help you is on the inspect menu, you can go to component color cycling toggle, and that will color the parts in the assembly according to the color code that we have in the tree. It just helps you to see which part is which by color. It can be very helpful. If you're following along, put your mouse over the knob of the crank, hold down your left mouse button and drag it around nice and slowly. You don't have to stay right on the knob. And if you do a circle around, you'll see that you can move that assembly the way that it was designed to move. So this is the Geneva mechanism. I'll see you in the next video.